Alright, so this is just going to be a quicker video about um, mounting the scope on the new Winchester Experts. Um, so if you're going to run a two-piece base, this is just what I have on hand. Um, number 16s, uh, which are also for the Marlin 39A, um, Mossberg 43, 44, 144, and a bunch of other guns, including Savage 1923-93s. They have the right contour, because the receiver's curved. They have both the right contour and the bolts, or sorry, not bolts, screws line up perfectly. They're set to the right depth. And it doesn't be function there. So, weaver number 16s. Um, see if that comes in frame there. Those are the bases you'll want for a two piece setup. So, for um, scope, the light gun, personally, I keep it light. I'm going to do, um, I'm going to put a scope on it and do an actual test next time I get out, or precision test, or whatever term you prefer. Um, and see how she does groupings, a few different types of ammo like CCI, which is what I was shooting in the previous video, um, Remington, and I think I got some Aguila. So I'll be giving those for you a try there. Jacket and lead tip, of course. Just see how she does. And um, so, yeah, so for scopes, I got two here on the table. Both are brand new, never been mounted. One's a Hawk 4 to 12 by 50 with an L4A dot, which is a beautiful reticule. I'm not putting this on, it's a heavier scope, it's made for a center fire rifle, and it is quite the beast, in, especially in uh, comparison to the gun. Um, <clears throat> the reason it's here is because I have some medium height mounts, and I just want to demonstrate the um, how well a uh, one inch tube with a 50 mil objective clears with a standard normal or medium height mount on this rifle. Now one thing to note, once you put the bases on you cannot use your iron sight. So see-through rings are out of the question, plus it'd be way tall and kind of uncomfortable. So with the 50 on it, I'm just going to hold that there. You got plenty of room there even with the scope caps on. So the scope cap off, you got plenty of room with the medium. Um, of course you do that old check right there with the paper or what have you but a 50 works so you could put a 50 mil tube on this or, or 50 mil objective sorry that's not a problem so that's just one thing I want to demonstrate because I always get asked questions like that it's like oh what you know what's the kind of scope can I run and I'm using mediums in particular because a I have them and B um, I just find it lines up best for me on the comb height and everything and that comes to what I am going to put on it because this is not a, it's not an inexpensive rifle, it's a nice rifle um, I'm just going to put a it's brand new Tasco Rimfire 3 9x40 um, came with the rings, I have um, I put this on, these rings, all I did was torque them down because I didn't have to adjust it at all actually, oops a little bit more. these are actually set up perfectly so that they just drop in and just torque them in. I'll do a, pro do a proper torque off screen, but just for the sake of this, just come down. And that's what a 40 mil tube. So let's see if I can come there. So plenty of room with a normal. You can definitely run a low profile um, rings with a 40 mil tube. That's not a problem. So you can bring it really far down and to come off camera. Like this here, my comb height, let's see if I can get in frame here, right there. So I'm just touching the lower part of my cheek onto, onto the stock, and that's right where I am. So I don't have to sink, I don't have to crush my face into it, into the stock to get a bead on this. Just rest it right at the bottom of my um, jawline there, and she's ready to go. So hopefully that's helpful to some people. Um, I, would, I do recommend this rifle even just for a planking rifle, not so much precision because it's when it's more of a recreation hunting gun. Um, but we'll see because I gotta do, I wanna see how she shoots it. I'm gonna do a 2550 and then stretch it to 100 with it. This is the scope I'll be putting just for, you know, just for simplicity's sake. Um, one thing to note in the uh, shooting video I did, you might have seen on the third round she got a little hang up. That's just really an ammo thing <clears throat> because she ran fine everything else and just getting her, well, it's a brand new gun so. That's what that is, and yeah, so over here I'm looking at the timer there, 
I might have time to show what it looks like under the stock line. Let's see. If I have the right screwdriver right here. Yep. Also, I ran uh, Butler Creek and 1022 mags in this on that uh, range day, and not a single problem. The only thing of note is with the Ruger Tri-Mag adapters, they, uh, they have this one little hiccup, that's the Butler Creeks, they have one little hiccup with this adapter that um, say, the way it mounts, this piece here puts extra flex on the um, on the Ford mag release, so when you try to pull these out, it's quite sticky. Like it's, it's actually a bit of a chop there. Very, just very stiff because it's putting pressure on one latch when you're trying to move another. But anywho, so there's those. Pull her on out. There is some rubbery material here, right here. I don't know if it's going to light well here and back on the tang right here. I don't know what it is. It feels, it, it feels like contact. But it's, I don't want to say contacts, man. It's very rubbery, and it will come off. Um, I'm not touching it. I think it has something to do with bedding, perhaps, but I cannot be sure for certain. And this is the trigger mechanism here, which is one of its big selling features. So captive unit um, for adjustment. There's a little, t very, very tiny uh, Allen head screw. Right here, it's got a little red on it, and that's how you adjust your trigger pull in and out. Personally, out of the box, this thing is beautiful, and I am not touching it. But that is how you would adjust it if you want to remove it. So if there's ever any aftermarket down the road, there's four more uh, hex heads or Allen heads here mounting this on. So you just screw these, pop this off, and away you go. Um, yeah. And then you got, um, for this barrel nut here, you got another screw right here, locking screw flathead you see right here this little stud so you'd be able to unscrew that and screw that take her off serial number also let me see here there's also a serial number right here coming on the side so and uh yeah so that's uh, that's all that hopefully this is helpful to somebody and have a good one <laughs>